Thank you. And good afternoon to all of you. Um, I hope you guys are keeping well. Uh, I am keeping well. I'm happy, um, healthy, and um, I'm so, so grateful. Um, I'm here uh, to talk to you guys. Another Thursday. Uh, time flies so quickly, you know. It's a uh, temple's frigid. You know, it goes so quickly when uh, you are having fun. It's so busy on end. Um, those guys who are involved in audit, it's another bunch of guys who are putting me under pressure. Yes, so I must complain. Yeah, okay. Um, well, it's good. It's good to be here every Thursday to share experiences, you know, uh, practical experiences. Um, every week, you know, every day, you know, it's a different day. There's never, you know, uh, two same days at Moracle. Every day is different, you know, uh, dealing with clients, serving them, even um, when it comes to even our colleagues as well, you know, you've got to be there for your colleagues. Like uh, our mission and our vision says, you know, it's uh, about transforming the lives of our clients and that of our staff members, you know, so we are big in that, you know, so there's so much happening. So guys, if you're not following us on social media, please do, yes, try and follow us. Try and um, just give some, um, you know, some takes, some likes, you know, some comments. That will be most, most welcome. Yeah. Um, but now it's always, always a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, this uh, training for me uh, is another way where uh, I get so much satisfaction, you know, um, in my day's job and what I do. Um I love what I do, and I'm sure you guys, uh, every week you guys are here, you know, to listen, which indicates to me that um, you guys love what you're doing. And for those new guys who are joining us, coming into the accountancy profession, you know, welcome on board. It's the best profession ever, the best job, you know, um, out there to do. Um, every country needs an accountant. Every business needs an accountant. And uh, every wealthy person out there needs an accountant. So tell me, yes, uh, the need for what you do exists, yes. Uh, so if you choose to become an accountant, it's a new, you know, young person, then you are on the right track. However, you got to know what it takes, what to do. You got to know what to do. You got to, you know, focus on, you know, uh, serving people, yes. Uh, emotionally involved in businesses that you are doing. Uh, you got to be exceptional, you know, wanting to do uh, things in a special way, ready to go the extra mile all the time, not just when you feel like or when you want. Yeah, it has to be um, in it. It has to be inside you. It has to be something that... Um, you are prepared to do all the time because this is what you are out there to do to serve. Um, today, one of the areas that I want us to talk a little bit more about, you know, uh, which is AI, um, uh, is a subject that, uh, again, you know, for me, uh, I see it uh, in, um, in a way that um, we have no choice but to embrace this kind of new uh, the new things that are happening around us. Um, it's not new, you know, in the way there's so many different things, you know, um, that people are spinning off or the way it has been presented. But this has been happening, you know, um, all along, as I, as I know it, yes. Uh, but there are things that we need to take, you know, um, into consideration. And particularly when we're talking about stage number one, you know, in the molecular accountancy formula. As we know, the molecular accountancy formula, which is what we talk about here every week, it's got six stages. Um, stage one, management information systems. Um, other people will say, well, that's the bookkeeping stage. You know, that's how traditional we call it. Well, at Moracle, we decided we don't want to call it bookkeeping because it's more um, beyond bookkeeping. Yes, beyond the numbers there. Uh, it's a massive, massive stage. So stage number two 
is management accounts and value added. This is where we prepare management accounts. Um, I was talking to one of our software providers um, just this week, and they were trying to sell, you know, management accounts, you know, uh, module, you know, to us. Um, and I got them to, you know, to kind of um, to check me through the module. Yes, and I can see uh, their management account. Yeah, it's all focused on just the numbers. Yeah, so you got your your stage one work has been done, either QuickBooks or Zero or Sage or whatever accounting software that you use. And then these figures are now inputted into the accounting software. And then what you then do is you pull out management account, which compares um, the actual position. The actual position compared to um, the, for example, last year, yes, or you could do month by month. Uh, well, for me and more cool, that is not management account. Management account is more than that, yes, and that's the reason why we add, you know, uh, this extra bit where we say added value, value added, because we are going to consider quite a lot of things where we prepare management account. Yes, it's not only the figures. And remember, those figures are historical figures. They're coming from, you know, um, stage one. And those numbers that are coming from the accounting or management information system are historical information. They are old. Yes, money is coming and money has been spent. Yes, and, uh, and all you do is you just put it into a format and say, here's my management account. That's not good enough. So you got to add some more other things, you know. Um, what about the budget? Yes, what about the forecast? Additional information that you get from outside of the environment. What is happening in the industry? Yes, uh, any other information that you can bring in, non-financial information. All of this, when you put them together as a package, is what constitutes management account that adds value in the way we do things here at Morico. And that software was a little bit short, you know, uh, but, you know, I left them with their homework, you know, they want a template, so I'm going to provide a template to them, you know, of how we want to do things, so see if they can adapt it. But we need to know, what I'm saying here, we need to know what is it that we want. Yes, uh, and this for me, yes, it sells, and it sells, and it sells. And what I mean by sell, not this, you know, where we want to go out there, you know, and sell it, you know, uh, to make money out of it because, well, you know, when you're selling, you're expecting something financial to come out of it, you know, make a profit, yes. Uh, but it's beyond that, you know, it's about leaving people, you know, with that impression of increase, yes. Uh, getting businesses to grow. When you do management account, you know, the way we do is here, every month, you're engaging with the client every month. You're talking to them. Yes, your order opportunities, you know, um, outside of the business have been considered. That business is going to grow. Yes, so uh, management account, yeah, has to have that added value to it. Yes, and we've got a, so a software that called Spotlight that does that for us in the nicest possible way. Stage number three, statutory account and scheduling. Again, this is one of our big area. We prepare accounts, you know, uh, and those accounts uh, for every statutory account that we prepare. Yes, at the moment, whether it is through digital, the accounting software that we use, or, you know, for some of the charities that we work on, we prepare them in Word. We're now going to be doing charity accounts within digital. Yes, which makes the consistency okay. Uh, but up until, you know, um, maybe a year ago, Yes, um, the software was not able to cope with the different charities. Because you know how charities are? Uh, every charity is slightly different. Yes, you've got churches now, which are charities. The way they present account is different from a normal charity. Even for normal charities, you've got different ways, you know, um, the, uh, their function works. Yes, the charitable activities might be different. And the way they want to report it is different. So when it comes to charities, you know, it's uh, really mindful Yes, so Word was what we were using to be able to cope and go around the problem. But now understand digital as a software, 
they've got a lot more flexibility built into the software. So we're going to try it on. But when you prepare those accounts yeah, at Moeco, you've got to have the accounting schedules to back it up. You can't just prepare accounts and say, here, my account is done, you know, and then the schedules are not there. So you are trained you know, to prepare schedules that support those accounts. Yes, and um, and there's so many positive reasons why you need a schedule for so many reasons. Somebody reviewing your work, you know, you don't need to stand there and explain how you come across, how, how you put those figures together. You know, uh, the breakdown is there. You know, somebody can look at it, understand where the figures are come from. Yes, um, internally, you know, uh, it adds to, you know, uh, the rigor that you need to have within when you are reviewing work, you know, the scrutiny, you know, uh, for these accounts at the end of the day, you know, to be fit for purpose, so to speak. Yeah, eliminate, you know, um, errors, you know, and, um, you know, because accounts, when you look at it, it's full of estimate, judgment, and assumptions. Yeah, the more you've got schedules and reason for why you've done something documented, the better. Yes, so internally, it helps to, you know, that internal control that you should have internally, it helps to boost that. But externally, yeah, you got a lot of queries coming from you know st other stakeholders, HMRC, Companies House, Charity Commission, you know the banks, financial institutions, you know um, um, uh, investors. They are all when they look at the statutory account might come up and ask questions about the account. So when you get a schedule that ties up and support the account, it's you know breath of fresh air. Yes, um, so. For us at Moeco, we are actually so, 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 you know, uh, a big, a big point. Yeah. Stage number four is the corporation tax and then um, self-assessment. Um, the clients that we have at the moment, you know, uh, if it's a company, you go through corporate tax. Um, and then also where you got individuals within that company who are directors. Uh, some of them are shareholders. So that gives them a different, you know, uh, multiple source of income. If you're a shareholder and then, you know, that, that business makes a profit, then that means, you know, when, you know, dividends is disclosed or, or declared, you know, then you might receive a source of income. Yes. Uh, if you are a director and you work and serve the business, then you might have director's remuneration. Yeah. So when you put all of that together uh, here in the UK, that individual has got multiple sources of income. So that means you need to now, you know, self-assess. So you go into the self-assessment. So when we are dealing with a company, we're not only dealing with the company itself, but we're looking at the individuals as well, who are the directors and shareholders of that company, because they might be exposed to, to tax, you know, self through their self-assessment. And we see a lot of these issues happening uh, whereby uh, you got directors who are out there. They have multiple sources of income. For example, they they might have, you know, second property or third property, yes. And then they have the dividend income or directors' remuneration, or they are working full time, but they have properties and they are directors of a company, yeah. So if you don't sit down and then have that conversation for tax purpose, they're exposed. But we don't know that because you say, oh, well, I'm full time. I'm full time employed. I've got second home, but um. That is not giving me any income at all. But in the eyes of the law, yeah, for HMRC purposes, no. You've got to, you know, uh, complete the self-assessment tax return. So all of these things need to be taken into consideration. So stage number four, that's where we tackle all of these things. Yeah, stage number five is the auditing, um, reporting side of things. Or if it's not an audit, then it will be independent examination uh, for charities. And then if it's not an independent examination, then it will be an accountant report. So just three reports, yeah, needs to be understood. And there are differences, you know, when you are dealing with these types of report. Um, audit report, you need to know, you know, it's an audit report, you, you need to follow, you know, statutory, you know, guidelines. Yes, uh, exa independent examination is a kind of a scrutiny, not an audit, but a kind of... Um, uh, as, um, additional scrutiny compared to the normal accountant's report. Yeah, but it is not an audit. So we need to understand, you know, the differences. 
at Moeku, we've got different types of companies, you know, businesses that we serve. So you need to know what type of report you're going to end up, you know, having there uh, within those accounts. Yeah, so it's so, so important, you know, to understand, you know, the reporting stage. Um, as you know, Moeku is an auditing practice, you know, so audit is big for us um, and always, you know, puts us and keeps us in our toes, yes, because uh, we've got the the audit regulators come in from time to time, you know, to to do their monitoring visit, yeah, to make sure that yes, we are complying. And if we're not compliant, well, we go into a problem, you know, then your certificate, audit certificate is at risk, you know. So that is big, yes, for us. And um and because it's an audit practice, then you've got more rigorous checks, yes, that we need to make sure that we comply with. Uh, six, number six, final stage, yeah, is filing with the authorities. You file accounts and confirmation statements with Companies House. Uh, you file accounts and annual return with Charity Commission. You file the accounts and um, City 600, which is the corporation tax, but also the self-assessment uh, tax return that we talked about in stage number four, yes, uh, with HMRC. Very important. More and more and more we see for charities which are normally exempt from corporation tax, charities are now receiving you know, corporation tax return that they need to complete. And again, the advice there is simple. Charities are exempt from corporation tax yeah, on the expenditure, income and expenditure that they've spent on their charitable objectives. That's what the tax law says. If they spend money as a charity on something that is not charitable, that spending yeah, is likely going to be taxable. Yes, because it will be non-charitable. So any activity that is non-charitable, money spent on those activities within a charity, then the taxman is interested. Yes. So when a charity receives a corporation tax return from HMRC, the first thing that you have to do is to is to complete it and send it back. Don't say, well, we are a charity, then we are exempt from corporation tax. So you dump the file. You have to submit it. If you don't, yeah, there are penalties, you know, and then fines for not doing it. Yeah. Okay. So we're seeing more and more of that happening. Charities are receiving um assessments, you know, or corporation tax return or reminders to complete it. And they are not doing it. Yeah. So be aware of that. And um, for all our clients, yes, we are part of our checklist. We're checking that with them, you know, uh, not only, you know, once a year, but month by month, you know, as we can. Yeah. To say, once you receive any notification from HMRC, let us know so that we can deal with that. Very, very important. Okay. We've gone through all the six stages. And you think we're holding well, you've done a fantastic job in the year, which is good, you know, when you've done that, particularly if you've done that early, you know, then you can say, oh, well, I need a holiday. Yes. Let me go and have a holiday. Yes. And then um, come back here before the, the next cycle. Start from stage one and then only all the way again. Yeah. Okay. Um, however, with Moeko, it doesn't work that way. You know, so the stages are always ongoing. Always. But the way we deal with our clients, yes, uh, more and more and more, we want to meet with them on a monthly basis. Yeah, so stage one and stage two is always on the go. Stage three, we say, well, okay, you know, it's once a year. We want to do that three to four months after the end of the financial year. Yes, so we can file those accounts, you know, and then that's out of the way. Yes, stage four, yes, almost as we file in those accounts, yeah, we're filing the corporation tax and filing the self-assessment as the case may be, you know, so early. So that means it's gone. Yeah, auditing takes a little bit of time, yeah, because there are, it's a statutory requirement. Uh, you've got to follow certain, certain statutory, you know, uh, protocols. So it takes a little bit longer to do. It's a whole, you know, uh, what you call it now, uh, minefield itself. Uh, because you got the audit checklist, you got the audit programs that need to be completed, 
Uh, you need to do a lot of verification work. You've got to do compliance testing, work through tests and all of the kind of stuff. You've got to plan, you've got to meet and talk, you know, and all sorts of different things, yes. So it takes a little bit much longer. So probably if we've got a charity audit or um, our audit client, probably, you know, um, six months after the end of the year, you're looking to round that up, yeah, or be equal, yeah. Uh, but the filing has to be done, you know, so get out of the six to seven months after the end of the account. In fact, we are now uh, finalizing a client the March, the year end is March, and now we're in July. So we're doing really fantastically well with this client. By the end of, I think, the signing date is um, on the 27th of July. Think about it, March year end. And then the board of course is going to sign this account on twenty seventh of July, so you know it's really really fantastic timing. No wonder we're under pressure. No wonder, yes, because uh, very short turnaround, yes. Uh, but we are almost there, almost there. So um, it's a big it's a big tick, a big part in the back, you know, for the team, yes, uh, to be able to complete it, and the client will be happy as well. Having done that, you know, uh, in a record time, but again, you know, there's you know different challenges that we face from time to time. Even with this audit, there's you know internal stuff that we need to tie up, but also the external bit as well. Yeah. Okay. Today, we want to spend a little bit more time on stage number one because um, it is July, and July we are talking about stage number one, management information system. And the area we want to talk about today is this area about um, AI. As you can see here, uh, from stage number one, we call it management information system, and it's for a particular reason. Yes, um, I remember earlier on in my own training, I always, you know, um, when I'm talking to particular young people who are coming through the profession now, who, you know, uh, I've missed out quite a lot. Yes, in terms of um, uh, the historical way of how things were being done. When I started my own training, yeah, it was going back years ago, you know, and um, uh, it was like a real cash book. You know, you got a manual cash book that we, you know, uh, we use pencil to write you on, and then uh, you can erase the pencil if you make a mistake, you know, and then change the number or whatever it is, and then... Um, Later on, we were told not to not to use pencil anymore because, um, you know, in accounts, you're not allowed to write something and then just change your mind, you know, I guess it, yes, okay? So we started using pen, yeah? So the pen means that you go ink. So when you write something, and you, if you make a mistake, then you're gonna just, just cross the line like this, you know, then you have to actually use the TPEX, you know? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's young people know TPEX. TPEX is a white fluid. You know, in a small container like this, you know, where you open it up, you know, you shake the bottle, you open it up, you know, and then you use the brush, you know, and then, you know, actually you brush the, uh, you you are painting, you know, the the, uh, the the pen or whatever it is, the the writing the number, yeah, and then you write over it when it is dry, yes. Okay, we all have different experiences, whereby sometimes you know you find that you know you are having to tpex that same particular area that plays the same over and over and over and then it becomes you know funny shape you know, like an oblong yes okay people of course were very good at doing that yes uh, imagine the amount of mistakes you know um one would have made for you to be able to get that effect but it happens yes i remember every one time when um so when we're using pen and then you make a mistake then you cross, it's a line, you just say across a line like this, you know, and then you write the, the new number. Oh, I love that, you know? So I need to have a ruler, even to draw a small one, I need to have a ruler to make it straight, you know? Oh boy, uh, beautiful, yes. Just uh, imagine, you, you're doing all of that manual, the time it took to be able to put set of accounts together. But that's what we used to do, yeah? And then we have this, you know, um, what you call it now, the massive, you know, um, uh, book, you know, the cash book, yeah, where you say you're doing your extended trial balance. When you open the book, you, it opens out so wide, you know, you've got your extended trial balance done manually, yes? 
And even that time, you were not allowed to use calculators. Yeah, so you need to use the pen and, you know, six plus four plus that plus that plus that. And then you're doing it like that. Yes. And um, gradually, you know, in some places, they begin to use calculators. Okay. And even for us who were taking exams those days, if you guys remember, if anybody here is listening to me, you know, uh, you go into the exams, you know, calculators were not allowed. Yes. Okay. No calculators. You don't take calculator into the exams hall. Yes. So if it's a maths or uh, an accounting subject, you got to be able to add it up, you know, from the from your brain, my friend. Yeah, up there. Um, and then later on, yeah, they begin to allow compute. They are begin to allow calculators to for you to take calculators in. But then you cannot take a scientific calculator into the exams. Oh my goodness! All those lovely days. Yeah, I hope you guys are following me. Yeah, um, and then yeah, typewriters come in. Yes, and um, uh, you move on to you know uh, computer. You know these big boxes. You know big screens. Yeah, now you have to queue to be able to use that. Yeah, because maybe it could be only one, and there may be five or six of you guys there. So you have to wait for your turn to go. You know, and do that stuff. The IT room was always, you know, a long queue to go down there. Yeah, and then um, laptops, yes, came in. Yeah, so we're able to use, you know, Excel, you know, and um, and the Excel, you know, came in with some kind of well, some magic, uh, because now the calculator disappeared. So you can just put your formula there, you know, and then a number appears. Oh my goodness, you know, it looks like this is really magic. Yeah. But well, those Excel, when you think about it, is single entry. So you're only recording a transaction in a single entry format. The double entry principle does not apply. You know, so then it moved on and accounting software start coming in. Sage, you know, another accounting software whereby the double entry system yeah, is embedded. So you post a transaction, yeah, it debits, you know, probably you know, uh, the profit and loss account, and then credit the balance sheet, as the case may be. Say, for example, if it's an expenses, you know, uh, uh, you debit the the, uh, the income statement and then credit the, the supplier account in the balance sheet, yeah? If it's a sales invoice, you credit the turnover or income, yeah, in the income statement, and then you debit, you know, uh, the debtor's control account in the balance sheet. So the double entry system is working. So you can easily produce your trial balance. So you don't need that extended trial balance that we used to, you know, play some magic, you know? When somebody balances the extended trial balance, it's like, you know what, uh, we can take a holiday, yeah, like a national holiday, you know? Because the extended trial balance, oh my goodness. Particularly when you have like four or five different bank accounts, you know, you have all these different customers and all these suppliers, and you have to have them in a, oh lot. That was really fun. Now, you can have as many customers, as many suppliers, as many bank accounts, you know, uh, as many people that you employ in the payroll. Yeah, all of them will be, you know, in an accounting system, and then you produce a trial balance that comes out nice and tidy, and it will balance at the bottom. Okay, uh, even that balancing, those days when we were studying or when we just started accounting. I remember this fellow, you know, oh my goodness, always you always bring a smile to my face. Um, that guy, we go to the exams, and the examiner say, you know, uh, you're gonna produce a trial balance. Yeah, and you guys, you know, it's still it's still there, you know, in the exams, when you do accounting, you're gonna produce a balance sheet and a trial balance or whatever it is, yes. And then um this guy came up with this formula. It says the examiner wants us to produce a trial balance. And when you say trial balance, it means that the debit and the credit needs to balance. Well, like we did, we didn't know that. We knew that, but it was not so evident or clear what that means. Yes. Uh, but you've got to balance it, isn't it? The debits and the credits in the trial balance need to balance. Okay. So it says, well, the examiner is testing us, first of all, to make sure that we understand the principle. So when we're in the exam, Yes, um, however long, you know, those adjustments, you know, if they ask us to produce a balance sheet or trial balance, we have to make sure the bottom bits, debits and credits are balancing. That's obvious, isn't it? But you try that in an exam. 
you will never, I'm telling you, to be able to balance the debit and credit because of time and you're under pressure. So it came up with this formula and says, just make sure you do one or two or a couple of uh, transactions or adjustment. Then what you need to do, you just make sure that the bottom bit is tying up. Yes. Uh, debit, 10,000. Credit, 10,000. And then you put another line there. It says adjustment. And the way that guy describes this, what he's done, that formula. And he describes it this way. If it doesn't balance, molar, you have to balance it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so if it doesn't balance, you have to balance it. And that's how he described that in his own methodology. And I'm telling you, when we all understood that, you know, all our exams that we took, I'm telling you, you know, and uh, we're all passing those exams. You know, uh, most of those were internal exams. I palmed those days, yes. So the lecturer looked at it and said, oh, hold on. The guys are balancing. The balance sheet is balancing. The trial balance is balancing. But then you've got this massive line there which says adjustment, okay? And you ask the question, you know, well, what were these guys doing? All of this, you know, I'm telling you, is all about awareness. Yeah, now we get to this point now where we've got QuickBooks, Sage, Zero, yes, and uh, a lot of systems is now, you know, integrated. You get a supplier invoice. Yeah, if it's zero, it come through probably HubDoc, yes, uh, or it come through Receipt Bank, yes, or whatever the, the, the third party software, you scan that invoice, you know, or you send it through an email, and then it goes through that intermediary connected, yes, and then it gets posted into zero. It happens with QuickBooks. So you don't need to post an invoice now, you know, and then type the, the, the narrative and then take, you know, the invoice itself and save it somewhere, you know, uh, like, oh, in a cabinet or in a folder, yes? And then you have to reference it or whatever it is. No, sorry. Now, you get the invoice, you just imp uh, um, import that invoice, you know, uh, into the system or you upload it, yeah? So when you click on that transaction, yeah, that invoice is there attached, you can review it. Even for auditing now, I remember those days, you know, you send a long list of um, uh, supplier invoice. Oh, this is my sample. Yes, 35, 45. You know, you're asking the client to go and dig out those invoices for you, for you to come and do your auditing verification work. No, you don't need it. You just need access to the accounting software, QuickBooks, Zero, Sage, or whatever it is. You now want to check a particular transaction. Yeah, you double click on the transaction, then the invoice is there. So you can upload that invoice and then you can do your audit work. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yes, the banks are now connected to the accounting system. Yeah, so you download the bank. You don't have to wait for the bank, you know, statements to come, you know, um, maybe a week or two after the end of the month. It's too late. Yes, now things are done. Yeah, on the go. Yes, on demand. Yes, um, as we speak, um, customers, you got, you know, a system there, uh, which is, for example, maybe it could be a CRM system, yes, uh, which is connected, you know, to the accounting system. So when a sales invoice is generated from the, from the CRM system, it gets posted to the accounting system automatically. It debits, you know, the, uh, the customer ledger, yeah, in the balance sheet and credit, you know, the turnover, yeah, in the income statement automatically for you. So if you did everything well, you will be sleeping and then your transactions, you know, QuickBooks or Sage are posted. Yeah, so to speak. Yeah. Just think about it. This description that I was giving you from those days whereby things were done, you know, in that red book, that manual, that TPEX to what we have now, you can imagine the amount of innovation, the amount of what you call, you know, AI that has been happening, yeah, for us to do what we are doing at the moment. But right now, if you are coming into the accounting space as a trainee, then what you will be exposed to would be this new system, new way of thinking, new way of doing things. But hold on, it does not just happen like this. 
Yes, people like ourselves, yeah, who started those years, even the guys who started before us. Just think about it. Yeah. That's why most people they look at it today, you know, uh, they talk about AI, it's like they are so, so scared, yes, that AI is coming to take our jobs. AI is now going to make people redundant. AI is not going to do things that, you know what? Yeah, the whole world, yeah, is going to disappear. But AI, I'm saying to you guys, has been there, yeah, from time immemorial. Yes, okay. Now, the awareness, for me, is the awareness is now heightened. Yes, just remember, in 1904 or so, when the Wright brothers yeah, took flight, when they decided, well, hold on, we are going to now get this machine to fly in the air, to move from one place to the next place and come back in 1904 or so. What do you think was happening there? Now, we can fly you know, to wherever we want to go. Yes, yeah, so easy, isn't it? Oh, as long as you got your passport, you got your ticket, Sorry, that's all you need. Yes. Uh, say you have, you know, uh, uh, what you call it now? Breakfast in the UK, and then you have lunch, you know, somewhere. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you can even have dinner somewhere else. Yeah. Easy, isn't it? But again, yes, what happened? Before that, how were people traveling? Yes, you say, oh, well, they got means of traveling. Yes, people were traveling. Yes, like I know people, yeah, from my own country who came to the UK. You know how they got here? They came by, you know, ship, you know, or boat. Yes, because that was the means or the mode of transportation, you know, those days. Yes. Okay. Um, so from that boat, you know, or ship or whatever it is, yeah, to what is happening now. Yes, where you can fly, you know, within a certain number of hours and then get to wherever you want to go from end to end of the world, then it's AI in motion. Yes. When these two guys were doing this, people thought well, they were crazy, isn't it? They thought, well, no, these guys have lost their, they've lost, you know, uh, their head. Yes. Uh, they think they're going to conquer the world this way. No, sorry, the world is going to come to an end if this machine Yes, where to fly. But you know what? They did it. So what happened? Yes, what happened? So I want to ask that question to all of us. What happened? Even right now, what is happening in front of us? Yeah, look at, listen to the tragedy that happened the other day when five people lost their lives. Yes. Um, they decided, well, hold on, paid a lot of money yeah, for some of them, yeah, to go and then explore, you know, um, under the sea, yes, and uh, it was kind of an excursion, so to speak. Um, well, we are going to go down there to see what is happening down there, yes. Um, so we're going to pay a lot of money to go and do it, and then tragedy. What happened? Encountered some problems, and then, hey, look. But do you think it's going to stop people because, oh, five people uh, died doing that? No. I'm telling you, um, more people are queued up, you know, paid up, ready to go the next one. I'm telling you. Yeah? Look at what Elon Musk is doing. Look at what all these guys are doing. Yes? Now, people are queued up, paid up, you know, to fly up to the moon on holiday. Yes, to go up to Mars or whatever it is, you know, well, holiday, yeah, it, that is going to become a, a common place. Well, all of this, yes, um, it's all about, you know, uh, the uh, level of awareness. Yes, uh, in my view, it's not new. Yes, always been there. People are people. Yes, this, we are God's highest form of creation. Yes human beings we are locked 
you know, inside of so much goodness, I'm telling you. All we got to do is just to allow it to come out. Yes. And what we could do, I'm telling you, my friend, you know, uh, it could be big and beautiful, like this AI. Yes. Over the weekend, you know, um, I, you know, uh, I'm part of um, uh, a mind, a mindset training company called Mind Valley. Yes. So uh, it's a three day event, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yes. Uh, and the event, they call it AI Summit. Yes. So obviously I'm a member, you know, so I registered for it, you know, and then, um, um, uh, I watched, you know, some of some of those because it was um, an online, an online event. You know, so much things were covered. You know, but they call it the AI Summit. But it's unbelievable, you know, um, what these guys were talking and exchanging. Yes, uh, and again for us, I'm saying here, you guys are listening to me. Yes, um, this is where we we need to that space. Uh, the new things that are happening around us. We have to rise up, you understand, to that level, to that challenge. We need to update ourselves. We need to be curious. We need to want to try things out. Yes? To just say, well, status quo is good enough. It's not good enough. Are you with me? So when I talk to my colleagues, stage number one, yes, and uh, you are there, whether you are in the finance function, or whether you are an accountant, you know, serving a client, yes, where stage number one is the management information systems. Think about it. What we're talking about here, we're saying different systems are coming into contact. The sales ledger, the purchase ledger, the payroll, the VAT, yes, the um, uh, data, you know, uh, or document management system, Yes, the CRM system, all of this need to be integrated. The all the bank connected to the the uh, QuickBooks or Zero to the accounting system. If all of these are connected, then you begin to generate your own AI in your own way. Yes, because within that, you think about it when you are now posting a purchase invoice, the first time you post it through either Receipt Bank or HubDoc, you set in some rules. So now a human being, an accountant, is now setting rules. Yes? So it's like, what is happening out there? A human being is now programming a machine to do certain things. Yes? Okay? It puts some formula there mathematical or whatever it is, a formula is now given to that machine. And when the machine sees certain, what you call algorithm, algorithm, yes, if I can pronounce that word, yes, when they see it, yeah, they begin to say, ah, okay, this is what it means. Yeah? An invoice comes, it says, an invoice from Morocco. Oh, who is more cool? More cool is an accounting firm. So accounting firm sending an invoice to us, that means they have provided us accounting services. So to post that invoice, the code that it should be going to, it should be called accounting or auditing services. Yeah, so it gives that code. So you now program, yes, the machine. You program QuickBooks or you program you know, uh, zero or your program sage. And since every time you see more cool invoice, yeah, it should be going to accounting or audit. So the moment you do it the first time, the machine intelligence now is now in play here. Yes, you don't do it the first time. It says, okay. Yeah, so you learn something. That's new. The second time, an invoice comes from more cool. What do you think that machine is going to do? It's going to suggest. It's going to say, oh, here is another invoice from Morocco. And we know Morocco is an accounting firm. Yes, and they provide accounting service. Last time, this is how we posted it. So this time around, I am going to suggest. So it doesn't post it. 
it make a suggestion to you. Morocco, you know, do you want to match it? Do you want to post it to uh, to this accounting? And then the second time you say yes, you post it to Morocco uh, to the accounting. The third time that he sees it, it says Morocco invoice comes in. What do you think he's going to do? He's not going to ask you a question now. He's going to say, oh, no, sorry, I think I, I know better now. Any invoice that comes from Morocco, the first one they posted it this way, the second time they posted it this way, the third time I'm going to post it that way. Yes? So the third time, it posted it for you. The fourth time, it posted that way for you. Think about it. That is AI in motion. <laughs> yes? What have we done? We, the individual, the accountant, yes, have actually programmed a software to be able to post a transaction yeah, in the way we want it to post it. Yes? Well, this is beautiful, I'm telling you. Well, try and contrast that, you know, to those days when I was doing this manually in a piece in a, in a book. How would I have done this? When I was doing that in manually, I get an invoice coming from Morocco. Yes. And then it says this is for accountancy service. How would I be recording that? Think about it. Manually. How would I be recording that? Okay. And I'll tell you. Yes, we've got something called the purchase ledger. So every invoice that comes in from a supplier, we have to record it. So it will be called, you know, a purchase day book. So we record it in the purchase day book. The date, you know, um, the activity, you know, the name of the supplier, what it is for, the amount, you know, and a little bit of description. Yes, okay. Um, then you go to the next one. You give it a code. You give it a reference. So in a manual way, you record it. Yes, okay. And then when the payment is made, you know, to that supplier, yes, then what we have to do now is now we go now and post it from the cash book and say, oh, we received some money. You know, we paid some money to that supplier. Yeah, more echo. Then we have to now manually go and match that payment to that supplier there. Well, for you to do that, you know what you have to have? You have to have a T account. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you guys know the T account. You should go to a T account. Yeah, T account. So you got debit there, you got carry there. So you can make sure you know where the where that invoice, yes, was posted in the in the purchase the book, which side of the T account should it be going? When the bank yes makes the payment, which side of that T account it should be going? You need to know that. And that was really beautiful. I'm telling you, yes? Uh, well, your double entry principle, I'm telling you, my friend, you got to know it inside out. Yes? So we had books like Frank Wood. I don't know if you guys understand that book or, or know that book. If you don't, please, I'm asking you, go and buy that book. I'm telling you. Yes? Frank Wood. And in fact, I'm looking to buy that book, you know, and make some donation to some people who are really, you know, uh, they, they deserve some accounting, uh, whatever it is. Yes? Frank Wood, made simple, yes? Uh, bookkeeping made simple is called. The only thing is, well, I do like to call it bookkeeping now, yes? Bookkeeping. Yes, I've moved away from that bookkeeping world. You know, it's it's, uh, it's a word that is very offensive for me now because it makes look it makes things look so simple, yeah? And it's, things are not that simple, you know, the way, you know, it should be, yeah? What I mean is you've got to be trained, yes? You've got to have the emotional involvement, you know, to do this kind of work, yes? Not anybody out there could do you know, that job. That's what I'm trying to say here. So when people say bookkeeping, oh, anybody can do bookkeeping. No, sorry, not anybody. You've got to be trained, yes? You've got to have eye for detail. You've got to have the emotion. You've got to know what you want to do. You've got to understand background information. This kind of stuff, you want to know it. Uh, bookkeeping does not take into consideration these things, yeah? Okay? So we don't use bookkeeping here. But manually, that's how we used to do these things before. But now, fast forward, now we are in this age now whereby, you know, invoices are going through like this. The bank is connected. Yes. And the other day I was just talking to my colleagues, you know, when I'm trying to explain, you know, um, they're talking to me about, you know, uh, or mixing the terminologies. It says when they are posting, they are reconciling at the same time. And I said, well, hold on. What does that mean? Reconciling? 
and posting are two different things. You first of all have to post. When you post, then you need to reconcile later on. And what reconciliation are you doing? Well, it's a bank reconciliation. That's one type of reconciliation. It's different, you know, from a reconciliation where you call, you know, the payroll reconciliation or the VAT reconciliation. You know, uh, they are all different reconciliations. But you need to post first of all. Yes. The other day I was talking to my colleagues, you know, when the payroll system connects to the accounting system, the journal entry that is generated, you know, uh, to reflect the payroll that has been run for that particular month. So when the payroll is run for a month in an accounting software or a payroll software, that payroll software is connected to the accounting software. Yes. So when the payroll is run, yes, and then you finish doing the payroll, you press that button, finish, then a, a journal is created automatically. And then that is linked to the accounting software and it posts that journal, yes, accordingly. Do you know that journal that comes out? What is it debiting? What is it crediting? The income statement or, and the balance sheet, those control accounts, do you know, you know, where this journal, yes, is going to end up? Yeah, can you picture that? Well, just look at that in itself. That in itself is another AI, you know, in motion there. Are you with me? Yeah, to get the payroll, which you run, you know, in a, a payroll software, and then you connect that payroll software to the accounting software, and then as soon as you finish running the payroll, yes, then a journal is created, yeah, which posts itself into the accounting software, and it's sitting down there for you. Oh, my goodness. How did we used to do that manually? Yeah, in the cash book. Yes. How did you used to run the payroll? How did you used to, when there was no computer, there was no uh, a payroll software, how did we used to do the payroll? Uh, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. From those days to what we're doing now, just think about it. It's a lot of AI in there. Yes. So what I'm saying here, guys, this AI that we're talking about, yes, already exists. Are you with me? All we're now doing now and seeing more and more now, we're talking more about it. Are you with me, guys? We're talking more about it, awareness. So as a result, yeah, it looks like it's something new. And when something new is coming, you know how these guys portray it sometimes? It's going to take, the, it's going to take over the world. Yeah, it's going to take over our jobs. Yes, definitely is going to, you know, affect, you know, some of the things that we do. But I'll tell you what is going to happen, guys. Yes, now we are working five days. Some people are working six days. You understand? Now it's going to cut down to probably three and a half days to four days. In fact, some companies now are working four days a week. Yes, four days a week. And we are looking to do that here. Four days a week, we're going to at Morocco. I'm telling you, we're working on that in the background. We don't need to come five days a week if we go AI. Are you with me? Yes. We don't need to come to work five days. Four days a week, yes, and then get AI to help us to do that. And the only reason why we could do that is because AI is going to help us. And what is AI going to do for us? Is going to take care of all the repetitive transactions, all the repetitive nature transactions who are out there, you know, start, is going to deal with that because machines are faster than us. They are quicker than us. They are accurate. They are cheaper. So what is going to happen now is, well, look what happened. You used to work six or five days a week. Now you're going to work four days or three and a half days. What are you going to do with the other days? Yes. Oh my goodness, there's so many other different things you could do, isn't it? You can spend more time, quality time with your family, yes? Or you can decide to go and do some other things that you wanted to do that you didn't have time to do, yes? But people say, oh, oh well, what if I work less and less number of days, will my salary come down? No, in fact, your salary is going to go up more because you're going to be trained to do things in a different way. Now you're going to be really specialized or you're going to do more the humanity kind of stuff. Are you with me? 
you're going to be able to do stuff that the AI is not able to do. Yes, and there are lots of things. Yeah, we'll talk about that next week. Lots of things that human beings, we can do and continue to do that AI is not going to be able to do. Yes, but we're going to have more time in our hands now. So the question now is, yeah, are you ready for that? Yes, and what are you going to do with that time? Yes, that you are now going to have. Yes, I like this phrase, you know, in the Bible where it says, what's in your hand? More like. Yes, that question was asked to, you know, uh, our old man, Noah, isn't it? Yes, what is in your hands? He says, use it. So we should be ready to use what we have in our hands. Right now, we have it. Yes, the number of days that you're going to work or time that you're going to be working is going to be slashed down. But you've got to make sure AI is in motion, guys. We've got to rise up to this AI thing. So next week, we're going to dwell a little bit more about AI. You know, some of those things that we need to now, you know, bring into bear when we're talking about AI. But rest assured that, you know, AI is not going to steal our jobs. Yes? AI is not going to replace us. Yeah, just think about this. I want to leave this with you. It's the machines. It's us, human beings. We are God created. Yes, and we created machines. So God created us, and human beings will now create machines. So machines are not going to be able to replace us. Are you with me? Because we are the ones that are creating them, and we are the ones that are going to continue to feed them with programs and programs. I know they say machines are going to create machines. I understand that. But I'm telling you, yeah, to some extent, we will still have, you know, control. Yes, I believe. Particularly when we come to the accounting side of things. But we have to have an open mind, yes, to be able to embrace AI, you know, as we know it. Yeah? All right, guys. I want to leave you guys uh, because now it's 7 past 1 o'clock. Uh, I'm just about to jump into another meeting. I hope this has been um, an eye-opener for you guys, yes, talking about AI and how we're going to, you know, uh, embrace this, yes, in the future. Nothing to be scared of. You just have to have an open mind, yes, uh, to be able to embrace it. Yeah, there are new things that we're going to see there, but there are things that are going to help us as well. It's a tool. Remember that it's going to be a tool. Yeah, to help us to do things in a much more efficient way. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys, for your time again, spending with me here today. Uh, I'm so grateful, you know, to see you all. And uh, I really appreciate you guys to leave what you're doing to come, you know, and be here. So uh, tap in your shoulder, you know, to each and every one of you. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. All been well. Yeah, in the interest of time, if you got a question for me, please just drop it in the box, yeah, in the chat box, and then next week we'll respond to those questions, yeah, or those comments. Yeah. Thank you very much.